Hey guys, Mark here again, uh, and this is going to be part one of a build-along project for a hybrid Mulgabit pyramid bow that I designed. I've made one already, and I had a catastrophic failure after about uh, two days of shooting it. Uh, I'll show you that one. Here's the two pieces. It was a beautiful bow, called it the Black Mamba because of its color. Uh, made out of red oak that I bought at a hardware store. It was a beautiful bow. Put some tip overlays on it to make some horn knocks. It had a, a, a nice riser, very comfortable to hold and shoot. Uh, the arrow shelf here, I had put a, a bare plastic arrow rest, which I'll transfer onto my new bow. Um, and it pulled at 65 pounds. Now I had I didn't have a scale at the time that I'd finished the bow. I knew it pulled heavy, but I figured instead of risking what happened to my first bow and end up stretching out below my intended draw weight, I was just going to man up and try to uh, uh, shoot the thing as it was and anticipating it would weaken by a couple of pounds. Well, it weakened by a few pounds, all right, but. When I did finally get my hands on a scale, it was pulling at 65 pounds at 25 inches, which was what my draw length is. Um, that's super heavy. Considering at 28 inches, it was pulling at 77 pounds. Had it my time back, I would have reduced the bow to get down to about 55 pounds at my draw length. If I chose to shoot a, a, a bow that was that heavy, I probably should have backed it with uh, fiberglass material or snake skin or PPC or rawhide or whatever. Um, probably would have went with the least expensive and tedious of that and backed it with fiberglass. Having said that, the Black, ba the Black Mamba is dead. Long live Black Mamba number two. So here it is. Went out to uh, Home Depot and got a eight foot length of uh, kiln dried red oak, same material I used for the first bow. And uh, the reason why I went with eight foot is that the six foot lengths didn't have the grain pattern that I was looking for. You want parallel grain going this way and along the, th the thick axis and the wide axis. That's what you're looking for. And even in the eight foot length I had to chop off three feet or so that I wasn't going to use based on uh, where the grain looked the best. Uh, before I transferred a, a template onto here, obviously, I sat down and drew a scale model on graph paper, and this is what I came up with. This design is a 66-inch bow, so it's going to be 33 inches from the center line. The center line is right here, so 33 inches out. The handle section is 9 inches long, and the design of this bow is similar to a Mulgabet, where you've got static parts of the bow, which are in the handle, and the ends and bending parts of the bow which are called your bending limbs that are here. Now what makes the transition from a static to a bending part are called the fades and the fades are two inch sections as you'll see go from the handle which is narrow wide out to the full width of the board and it'll be faded from full thickness down about a quarter inch to about a half inch thick and so your bending limbs will be about a half inch thick. Now I don't have those lines drawn on there yet because I've got to make these reductions first. So what I'm end up with here is a nine inch handle, uh, handle section that doesn't bend with a two inch fade on either end again the fades are not meant to bend followed by your bending limb which goes from the end of this fade to the beginning of another fade here and this whole length of 15 inches will bend and this is the working part of the bow. Uh, once you get to the fade here again you've got a two inch fade that doesn't bend into a nine and a half inch uh, uh, stiff limb portion and that'll be your, your tips and there will be three inch tip overlays on here as well to make some horn knocks. So I'll recap the, the measurements find your, your, you cut your length to 66 inches and you can tweak that depending on your own uh, sketch and layout. Find your center line, four and a half inches out to either side becomes your handle section. One inch above 
center is where my arrow rest is going to be. Or I should say, the beginning of my arrow shelf and sight window. The handle is one and a half inches thick and that'll get reduced through the finishing process of the handle but starting off you want it at one and a half inches thick two inch fade out to the full thickness of the board in this case is two and a half inches fifteen inches of bending limb to the start of the next fade and this the start of this fade is two inches wide uh, correction one and a half inches wide it started initially with two inches wide but determined that you know it didn't give me the look that I wanted and I reduced it back down to one and a half inches that fade goes for two inches to 0.75 inches three quarters of an inch wide and the, the uh, static limb or the non-bending limb is nine and a half inches long it'll be three quarters of an inch wide by three quarters of an inch thick as that's the thickness of the board and we'll get to the tip overlays when we get there what I've done here for this section, and you can experiment with that, is where the sight window from the arrow shelf through the sight window goes back up through the fade, is that I did this, this side of the bow the same as I did the other side. So I measured four and a half inches out, two inch fade out to full, full thickness of the board. On this side, I did uh, a measurement to the half width of the bow, so it's three quarters of an inch to center. Then I drew a pencil line. And then from the start of this fade, correction, the end of this fade, into the handle, I left myself an inch and a half for, for a sight window. And therefore, this angle is slightly different than this one, but works really well. It'll be slightly asymmetrical but it does work really well. And that's the same pattern that I used for the, uh, the first Black Mamba. So if you have any questions based on this video on the measurements or the materials or where to get them or how to cut them, my next step here is going to be taking this to a friend's wood shop and I'm going to rough out the, uh, the design with a bandsaw. Then I'm going to uh, take the template down to the lines using a wood rasp and, and sander. Uh, and then once that's done, I'm going to glue a riser block on the, the handle of the blow using a uh, one and a half inch uh, finished oak and maple layered. I've got them glued up right now and that's uh, curing. So um, once I get to that step, I'll show you what that looks like. Take care.